Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren. I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios and in this video I'll demonstrate how I sketched out a rose and then colored it. So if you're interested in learning how I drew this rose here, just keep watching. So I'll have a link down below in the description box to the original reference image that I used. Um, if you'd like to color along and draw this flower with me, you can download it. All I ask is that if you choose to post it on the internet anywhere, you either link back to my website um, to give me credit or mention me on my Instagram. So if you choose to post it on Instagram, just remember to tag me and my username is at Potato Art Studios. But you're free to download it and use it and follow along with this video if you'd like. So I'm going to be showing you how I sketch out the rose first. And this video is sped up two times the normal drawing speed, so it's twice as fast as I actually draw in real life. Um, but I want you to see that how I simplify the petals into basic polygon shapes and I'm not getting too carried away with trying to do a lot of detail in the beginning. So for my pencil of choice, I really enjoy using the Prismacolor Cool Erase Pencil um, because it erases very easily. In the second round of this sketch, I'm going to be paying a little bit more attention to the details on the petals. So you'll see that I'll go over the same areas, but this time I'm trying to be a little bit more careful with how I describe how the petal curls over itself. And I think this is a, one of the most identifiable traits of a rose. So your rose doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you can get that shape of the petal, like how it curls and how it spreads from the center going outwards, people will be able to understand that you're trying to draw a rose. So you don't have to be too worried about having every petal in the exact right position. Um, it can just be close enough and your drawing will still look like a rose. So in the second go around, um, I'm applying a little bit more pressure so I can tell the difference between my first sketch and the second sketch. And my rose ended up being slightly elongated from my actual reference picture that you see in the upper left hand corner. Um, but that's okay. And you can still tell it's a rose even though it's not 100% accurate to the reference picture. And now I'm going to erase that very rough sketchy sketch I made in the very beginning. And now I'm going to go over my more refined sketch with the kneaded eraser that you see me kind of pulling apart like taffy right there. And the kneaded eraser has a tacky surface so it'll pick up some but not all of the marks that I've made. So the reason why I'm trying to lighten my sketch is because the yellow color pencils tend to be more transparent so if I just colored directly over the sketch as it was, um, you would actually see a lot of the sketch marks that I made on the drawing, which would be slightly distracting. So I'm going to lighten it as much as possible with my kneaded eraser and then start coloring. And I like to start um, applying color with the center and going out. Um, it allows me to have a Point of focus being the center of the rose because that's where the most amount of information in my flower is and then I usually end up being a little more loose as I go outwards and draw the outermost petals. So to the left of my drawing you can see that I have a scratch piece of paper and I'll periodically just make a few quick scribble marks on that scratch paper um, to see the color that will show up before I color on my actual drawing. Um, and the reason is because when you're working on toned paper, of course a little bit of the paper color will show through the colored pencil. So the color that you want to put down might not actually be what happens because the pencil and the paper interact with each other. 
Uh, before I make a mistake on my drawing, I'm going to experiment with that paper on the side first. In the early stages of my drawing, I usually like to just block in color, so I'm not getting too detailed. All I'm doing is defining what areas are the highlights, the mid values, and the dark values. So I'm using only a few colors, just the white, the yellow, and a darker orange. And once I have that down, I'm going to put a bit of color variation so you see that I have um, some kind of like an olive green color, um, also a gray color, and I'm kind of just filling in the areas be that are between the brightest, the middle, and the darkest value. So it's kind of like a paint by numbers. I'm just dividing up the petal into areas that are bright, mid-tone, and dark, and I'm just coloring accordingly. This is my first layer of color, so I'm not too concerned with having the paper color covered completely because I'll be going over this row several times. And now I'm going over the petals with E. Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral spirit, and I'm doing this to blend out the first layer of color. I will leave a link down in the description box with a tutorial by Lakri, and she explains a lot of great tips and tricks to working with an odorless mineral spirit um, with colored pencil for blending. And you can see that the colors changed a little bit after it dried. Um, they got a little bit lighter because the brush tends to pick up uh, some of the pigment off the paper as you're using the odorless mineral spirit. And I use a particular brand of odorless mineral spirit by a brand called Gamblin and their mineral spirit is called Gamsol. So I will use Gamsol more often than odorless mineral spirit just because it's shorter and it's the brand I use. And I'll leave a link to that down below in the description box as well. So once it's dried, I'm going to go over the pencil again in the second layer of color. And I'm trying to focus on increasing the vibrancy of the color. So, so there's two things that happen when you're trying to make something look bright in a drawing. Um, you can use a bright color, like a bright yellow. Or you can also desaturate the colors around it. And the rows on the shadows of the petals, I can also put grays or complementary color of yellow, which is a purple, and that will desaturate the yellow color. And so by having more of areas of the rows that are a desaturated color, the areas, the smaller areas that are highlighted and are really have that bright yellow color will pop out of the page even more. So I'm playing with those two factors. So my second layer is of color has been done and I'm going to go over a part of the flower with more gamsol to blend it. And while that area is still wet to protect it, I'm putting a sheet of glassine paper between my hand and the drawing to protect the drawing. And glassine is just um, basically a very smooth paper so it won't smear your drawing. Um, you can use parchment paper or just regular computer paper. Um, basically, if you have something to protect your your hand from smearing your hard work. So you'll see that I'll go over the same areas multiple times um, because it takes a while to build up the color, um, especially working with yellow. Um, it's difficult to build up the opacity of lighter colors like yellow. And to get the petals to look even more realistic, I'm going to make sure that the edges are very sharp um, between petals to give them more definition. So to do that, I'll make sure that um, my pencils are sharp at that location where the one petal overlaps with the other. And so that will separate the petals and not make them look like they're just one blurry flowery mess. And so you can see just the large range of colors that I'm using here. Um, I typically don't give a list of the exact colors that I use because it 
it'll, it'll always be different. What I have will be different from what you will probably have on hand. You can tell the color that I'm using by the color of the outside of the pencil. So you get the general gist of if I'm using a light yellow or dark yellow. Parts of the rose that I want to be the brightest white I can possibly achieve. I'm going to go over those areas with the Derwent drawing pencil in Chinese white. And that's the pencil you see here with the dark reddish brown paint on the outside and the very thick white um, core. And this pencil has a very soft lead to it, so it actually layers very opaquely over almost anything you put on top. So I like to use it for the very brightest highlights, but it's not good for larger areas. So I try to reserve this pencil for only when I really need those small moments of white to really pop out of the page. Here I'm just defining the petals that are in shadow a little bit more. You can see as soon as I draw that outline on the petals, it makes the petal on top stand out from the petal below it. And it's just a lot of fine-tuning, just going back and forth between your reference picture and your drawing. So if you step back and look at your drawing and squint, you can tell if you have made one area bright enough or one area dark enough, or you added enough um, of one color to a certain area. Um, stepping back from your work really allows you to evaluate your drawing a little bit better than it when you're sitting close to your drawing because it's hard to see the big picture when you're working so close. So in some areas of this rose, it probably has close to five layers of color. Um, and that's, again, partially because the yellow is transparent. Um, but just remember to go slow and try not to rush. I think you'll be much happier with your drawing if you take your time and try to just enjoy the process of drawing. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. So you can see that I'm using a lot of colors other than just yellow for a yellow rose. And I think that's really important to note because if I were to just use a yellow, dark yellow, light yellow, it would actually be a little bit visually boring to look at. So I'm kind of expanding my color range to also include colors that are complementary. So I'll use a purple that will mix with the yellow and actually neutralize that color and make it kind of like a less saturated yellow. And I can also use some grays and also colors that are next to it on the color wheel. So I'm going to also use some greens and oranges. And it looks a little bit odd at first, but it'll all pull together, I think, in the end. Um, so you don't need to use the exact colors that you see on your paper. You can expand your color palette just a little bit and play around with color and see what you, what you prefer to do. And I'm just blending out a little bit more area on the shadow portions. I'm using the Filbert brush and also a tiny detail brush. Um, this one's by Creative Mark, and again, I'll leave links to all the brushes I use down below. And once that's dry, we're almost wrapping it up here, and I'm doing just a few more touch-ups especially on the darkest and lightest parts of the rose to get them to really pop and improve the contrast. Um, if you have any questions about my drawing process, um, please ask down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, if you have any requests for a future drawing time lapse, um, you can also leave that down below curious to see what you'd be interested in seeing next. If you want to be notified of uh, any future vi videos, um, make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified when my next video is up. I 
post new drawing time lapses every Monday. So be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on anything, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.